Well, that little girl is all grown up now. Would you give a warm Mercer Iron welcome to Carolyn Grimes? A fabulous job you've done here. Well, we wanted to make it special for you. It's a wonderful morning. It's a wonderful life. I can't help but notice that as Jimmy Stewart put those pedals in his pocket, that you were looking right at where he was putting them, weren't you? I was looking right at him. I saw him, yes. The movie is about so many things, but relationships are very important in this film. And I think that in this particular scene, Frank Capra was trying to show that I loved my daddy very, very much, but I knew he wasn't perfect. <laughs> at that time when the film was made, were you about six years old? I was. Mm-hmm. And I think just last year we celebrated the 60th anniversary of the making of that film. So I guess the secret's out. <laughs> I'm going to be 67. <laughs> wow. You know what? That's our family's most favorite film, and I know that our family's not alone. How many of you all can't get through a Christmas season without watching It's a Wonderful Life? Yeah. Good for you. And how was life for Carolyn Grimes as a six-year-old? Well, it was pretty wonderful. <laughs> I got to work with Bing Crosby, Cary Grant, David Nevin, Loretta Young, all these wonderful people, and it was a world of make-believe for a little girl. I got to wear all kinds of costumes, and it was just so exciting. I got to ride in stagecoaches and be chased by Native Americans while I'm in a, you know, wagons and, and being shot at, and all just, just wonderful stuff. <laughs> I had my own... Amusement park. <laughs> and that was on the set. Uh, at home, you had a, a loving mother and father as Did. well. And I was raised in a Baptist church, and I was baptized at the age of 11. And it was a, it was a wonderful life for me. I really had a wonderful life. I've enjoyed uh, singing the hymns with you this morning. What a beautiful voice God has given you. God has given me a beautiful voice. I, I actually um, went through college on my voice. <laughs> wow. I was very fortunate to have a lot of different um, talents, but one of them, I think, uh, was the fact that God granted me the wisdom to know and appreciate the talents that he's given to me. Now, the wonderful life that you had as a child actress didn't stay wonderful for a long time. Tell us what happened early on in your life that were some hardships you had to overcome. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to say I've had skin cancer, and I just had surgery three weeks ago, so I'm not really supposed to talk, smile, laugh, or do anything good, <laughs> like eat. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of handicapped here, and I really can't get across what I'd like to get across. But uh, when I was 14... Uh, my mother died. She'd been sick for several years, and she uh, had early onset Alzheimer's. She died when I was 14. My father was killed in an automobile accident a year later when I was 15, and I was an only child. So the court in Hollywood shipped me back to a little town in Missouri, and I lived with my father's brother and his mean wife. And um, She really was mean, wasn't she? Oh, she was hideous. She was a very, very mean, mean person. And the whole town was very small. My high school class had been 900 kids. That was my high school class in L.A. I went to L.A. High. And in this whole town, there were 800 people. So that was a huge culture shock for me, if you can imagine. But after a year of feeling like I died... The town rallied around me, the people. They showed me the goodness there is in this world. They knew I was in a terrible situation. So the merchants, my teachers, my friends, everyone gave me the love and concern and caring that I'd really never seen before in just people. Because in Hollywood, it's not like that. It's kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And so I was really impressed, and that's when I knew that this was meant to be. I had to learn a lesson here. So in order to get out of my horrible home situation, I decided to go to college, and I got a lovely um, 
education to be a medical technologist. So I had no desire to go back to Hollywood. And uh, I was lucky that I did that because I ended up getting married and I had two little girls and then my husband and I had a little problem and we eventually separated and it wasn't but a couple years later he was killed deer hunting. So leaving, your, your leaving me with, without, a dad. without a dad, the two girls. And um, so a few years went by. Thank goodness I had a skill that I could support my children. Because in those days we were pretty young and didn't have life insurance and things of that nature. <laughs> so actually it, it gave me another opportunity to grow and to learn from what happens to you in life. But you know, all along God... I prayed to God, and God gave me the strength to get through everything. He gave me the wisdom to look for the positive things, the good things, because there's always something good in something bad that happens to you. There's always something good. You just have to look for it. So anyway, my uh, life went on, and then I met a man that had three children. I married him. He had three, I had two, and then we had two together. So I... I spent several Earth years. And hours, yes, right? I spent several years raising children. <laughs> I lived in the kitchen and the laundry room and uh, the car, so that was kind of it, carpooling. So that was my life for many years. And uh, in 1980, I retired from being a medical technologist because my kids were teenagers and they needed me more than they did when they were toddlers. So I stayed home with them, but also that was the year that somebody knocked on my door and said, are you that little girl that played in the movie Swarmful Ice? And I said, yes, I was Zuzu. And so they said, well, can we write a newspaper article about you? So I was sure. So they wrote an article, and it just grew from then. The wires picked up more articles, and pretty soon people were sending me fan mail. After all these years, and I was, I was just taken aback. I couldn't have believed this. So for a while, I sent out original photos <laughs> because I, I was so thrilled. Well, then I learned that you copy these things and you don't send originals out. But it turned out to be what a wonderful opportunity, a door that I have that's been given to me to touch people's lives and to reach them and to share the many messages from this wonderful film. And as it turned out, the Lord really opened that opportunity for you because there was still some heartache that yet awaited you that this whole rediscovery of It's a Wonderful Life as a, uh, a cultural phenomenon and your participation in that would carry you through some hard days. What were a couple of others of, of those heartaches? Well, there were so many. It, it, when you have seven children, you have a lot of, of heartaches and joys and a lot of different things. But what really happened that perhaps affected my life more than anything ever has was the loss of my 18-year-old son to suicide. You can lose a son or a daughter in an accident uh, in many different ways. But when you lose a child to suicide, there's so much guilt involved and so much pain that the what-ifs and the things that you didn't see, now you see. All these things are raked up and you suffer so much because you know that that person was so unhappy that they did not like to live their life. What, what did you do wrong? So you have to learn to... Accept the fact that you did the very best you could. And in retrospect, there were a lot of mistakes, but that's the only thing that really has been given to me through God is the wisdom that I did the best I could. But that was a tremendous heartbreak for me. And losing a child is like losing a part of yourself. You never get over it, but you learn to live with it. And thank God that he gave me the strength to do that. Because I had other children, I had a life, and I had to continue. My son was going to a Catholic all-boys high school. And one of the priests there called me and he said, after his death, he said, you have to come back and help us and volunteer just like you always have been. And I said, oh, I don't think I can, Father. He said, yes, you can and you will, because God needs you and you will help us. So 
<laughs> I said, well, I guess I better do that because <laughs> I don't want to get on the bad side of this guy. <laughs> so I went to the church and uh, to the school, and I went ahead and continued my volunteer work for 11 years. And I worked with all these boys, and they, some of them had gone to school with him, and, you know, it was it was difficult at first, but then it was a healing process for me, and uh, it really helped me get through all of all of the things that I had to get through, the emotional uh, stirrings and the emotional fears, and, and um, I had to experience these things. And then my husband of 25 years uh, got cancer. I think the stress from the loss of our son kind of got to him, and it ended up that I was his caregiver for a year, and then he uh, died. So um, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up meeting the present Mr. Zuzu a few years later, <laughs> and he has been a real joy to me, and we've been together for now 11 years, and um, going on 11 years. We moved here in the Seattle area eight years ago, and, um, and one daughter has followed, and now I'm so excited another daughter has followed. My daughter had cancer last year. She had breast cancer. So it seems like there are constant tests. How many of you have experienced this? There are constant tests that we have to go through and that we have to experience them but you know why i think it's so we can help other people and we go to god for strength to have the ability and the capability to do these things as long as we keep him in our hearts it's a given that we have the ability to deal with these situations so right now um Things are wonderful because God makes it that way, because you'll find the good, always the good. And um, a lot of people say to me, well, how is it that you can find something good that you lost your son? Well, out of that, his best friend came to us, and he was so upset because he lost his best buddy. Well, we found out that he was really without sons, so... I had put him through college, and he's become a lawyer, and he's getting married um, next month. How wonderful. So that's a good thing that happened, because otherwise I would never have known there was such a need for financial assistance. And I had faith in him, and he certainly proved me to be correct. God gave me the right direction there. i got to share how this opportunity to have Carolyn with us this morning came about because it really was a God thing, I think. Dave is Selvig, he everything? It, well, he is. Yeah, but this just kind of stood out. <laughs> Dave Selvig from our church invited us to uh, a radio drama reenactment at Bellevue Community College in December over Christmas, and Carolyn was playing the part of Mary Bailey in this drama that was on stage. Dave Selvig and his grandchildren were, were in it as well. And at the end of it, I took my daughter, Allison, who was back from college in Chicago, and we just delighted, you know, you signed something for Allison, and then about a week later, we're sending Allison back to Chicago at SeaTac, and just for fun, as we're hugging at the security line, I just, you know, as I'm prone to do, say things off the wall sometimes, I just said, and be sure to take care of Zuzu's pedals. And Allison said to me, Dad, shh. I said, what? Shh. And I looked over my shoulder, and there Carolyn Grimes was walking right past us in the airport. Out of the blue, totally unexpected, and why I would have even said that crazy little thing. Only God knows. <laughs> so we got together, have done an article that will come out in Focus on the Family, uh, some of what Carolyn has shared this morning. They have Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. Atta boy, Clarence.